Hello, bride. Papa, say hi. Hello. We are we're working in new the new church. We're getting everything together. Look, I've got a little bit decorated in the front. We don't have electricity yet. We're hoping they hook it up today. But if not, it'd be Monday, so we may not be able to do church here on Sunday. But we don't have the internet here yet. It'll probably be next week. But Papa's remodeling my office here. Let's see. We got to make it bigger in order to get my... I know, don't you love these colors? We're not getting rid of them either. You know, we, we like all these vibrant colors, so we're going to leave them. And, um, you know, this woman, have I told y'all the story? I'm going to have to step over here and tell you guys the story. Let me go over here. All right. I'm going to share you. I'm going to tell you guys the story. Let me get my little chair here. Y'all just have to put up with him drilling and stuff. Okay, now. Okay, once upon a time. When I had the other office in Winchester, okay, uh, this woman sent me a package. Well, at the time I had a receptionist and I guess she just put the package in the back in the storage. I don't know why, but somebody did. So about six months later, I get an email from this woman and she says, did you ever get my package? And I'm like, I don't think so. And she said, yeah, I sent it about six months ago. I'm like, what? So, you know, we was really desperate for money and needing it for something. I forgot what it was then, but I said, let me go look around. And I said, oh my goodness, here it was all the way in the storage. <laughs> Listen, I pulled this thing out, and she had this in there. Look. Let me scoot up here. Look. Beautiful peacock feathers. She had them in there. And I'm like, what? What is this? Peacock feathers. Look how beautiful. Look. I mean, look at the beautiful design of God. Like, look at that beautiful blue. And so I'm thinking, peacock feathers. What am I doing with peacock feathers? And then she tells me a story. She said, these feathers come from my peacock that I had for 40 years. And he just died. So I gave you his last feathers. I started crying. I'm like, what a story. I mean, she sent them because of how much she loves me and my ministry. Look at that. Isn't God amazing? And um, so I just told her thank you. And then she said, did you look in the bottom of the box? I'm like, no. That woman gave us, I forgot how much money, a thousand or two thousand dollars. I mean, it was exactly what we needed at that time. I'm like, is God good or what? So anyways, I've had these I've had these things ever since then. And I'm like, Lord, what do I do with these little peacock feathers? And then I realized today these were meant for this church. Because see, I told y'all the story of the plumber that came to the house and he tried to say he was racist because he char wanted to charge us a ridiculous amount. And we was like, uh, no. And so I told him, I said, and he said that the reason we didn't want to pay is because he was black. And I told him, I said, sir, listen here. We are the last people that's racist. We have people in our family that's all tribes and tongues. So, I mean, we have every color in our family. So anyways, now that I think about it, see, this building represents the church. All tribes and tongues, all colors in the kingdom. 
We're not racist. <laughs> send me every color, Lord. Send me every nation. Because see, I told the Lord, I said, you know, years ago when I first got started in ministry back in 2013, I said, Lord, please. I said, I want to touch the face of every nation before I go to heaven. I want to touch your peoples, all nations. So, since we're not able to travel anymore, maybe he'll send them here. All the tribes and tongues, send them, Lord, send them. I will love every nation, every tribe and tongue. Y'all remember the sermon I told you when I preached at the, at the men's prison? The Lord gave me a dream about these trees. So when the guy come in there, when the guys come in, there was probably maybe 200 prisoners. And when they come in, when I would see a different color, I would say, what nation are you from? And they'd say Cherokee or Asian or whatever. And then I said, okay, when I say this word, I want you to walk up front. And they said, all right. So I was telling them the dream that God gave me about the trees, because we're all trees in his great God. And no tree has a choice of where they're born. They don't have a choice of who their parents are. They don't have a choice of what race they are, what color their bark is, what color their leaves are, what area they're born in, what violence they're born in, the, the storms in the, in the city or nothing. So, they're all in the garden for a purpose. They're all in the garden for a purpose. So, I was telling all these prisoners, I said, see, all trees, no matter what color, no matter what their differences are, they all have a purpose. And so... And then I said the word, and they all come up front, and I walked to the back, and I said, all right, because we had all tribes and tongues standing up front in front of all them prisoners. And I said, you see all these different colors? You see all the different missing leaves, all the different color bark, different color leaves? I said, now you see God. This is God. He's all nations, tribes, and tongues. He's not one color. He's not one style. He's not one type. That's why he likes everything different. All different kinds of trees and everything. All of his animals are different because God is variety. But I told him, every one of you, no matter what your tribe or tongue, you're hollow trees until you have Jesus Christ in your heart. When you let Jesus come in your heart, then you become a fulfilled tree. So, when I did the altar call, man, they all lined up. One big long line, they just wanted me to pray for them. We only had maybe 15 seconds for each, pre each prisoner. So they would walk up to me like this and they'd say, my tree has demons. I mean, they knew exactly what I preached on. They knew exactly what I said. So I laid hands on them and I said, devil, come out! I would tell them real quick, I'd say, repeat after me, after Lord in your heart. And then they'd get saved. The next one would come up and say, my tree is hollow. And then I'd pray for them to get saved. So, yes, this peacock was meant to be colorful, and so are we. And see, that's another thing that I keep on telling you, Brad, is how people want to put you in a box because they want you to be like other people. God doesn't want you to be like anybody else. See? He, want, he wants you to be unique. He wants you to be exactly how he's called you to be. And see, now, y'all are seeing Dennis's personality. Like, like that video I did of him on the swing. That's how he is. He's, he's very youthful in his heart. And you'll see it now. Because Dennis, he's getting more comfortable behind camera. Look at this leaf, Brad. Oh, Lord, you're so amazing. Look at this one. Aw. Look at the beautiful. Look how good God is. Oh, 
Is that not amazing? Look at that. And to think that this, this peacock was 40 years old. So amazing. Well, thank you for the compliments, girls. Thank you very much. I'm very excited about this office. My daughter just called and says she may be coming down next week to spend some days with me to help me put it all together. And since I won't have electricity to Monday, it'll be fine uh, for her to come and help me get it all put together. And Oh, you love my stories. That's awesome. Well, God is good. I just wanted y'all to see the progress we're making. We're moving right along. I'm excited to get back online and be able to go full steam ahead again. I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. God bless.